Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some people swear by them, while others wouldn't go to see one if their life depended on it. Have you ever been to a chiropractor for an adjustment? I will admit that all of the popping and the cracking sounds can be a little unnerving. Of course, conventional doctors have been known to use a few unorthodox techniques from time to time. A receptionist found that out one day when she heard a loud scream and then watched as an 80-year-old woman came running out of one of the examining rooms. The little old lady didn't stop running until she got to her car and went screeching out of the parking lot. When the doctor came into the waiting room, the receptionist asked him what happened. Oh, the doctor said, I told her she was pregnant. The receptionist couldn't believe it. Are you serious, she said? That 80-year-old lady is going to have a baby? The doctor smiled. No, he said, but I did cure her hiccups. (laughs) Maybe chiropractors aren't that weird after all. Besides, you could make an argument that God is a chiropractor, a spiritual chiropractor, if you will. However, instead of working on your spine and your joints, God specializes in attitude adjustments. Just look at what happened to Elijah while he was there on Mount Sinai. God gave Elijah an attitude adjustment. And to tell you the truth, Elijah needed an attitude adjustment. How about you? Do you know anyone who needs an attitude adjustment? Do you need an attitude adjustment yourself? God specializes in attitude adjustments. But let's start with Elijah. In order to understand what's going on here, you have to hit the rewind button and back the story up a little. It all starts when Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal to a contest on Mount Carmel. Elijah wants to prove to the people of Israel once and for all which God is the one true God. Well, Elijah wins the contest. And when the people realize that they've been duped by these false prophets, they rise up and they put them all to death. When Jezebel hears that, she isn't happy at all. She's furious. That's because the prophets of Baal were loyal to her. So Jezebel sends a message to Elijah that basically says, Elijah, before this day is over, you're a dead man. Well, Elijah does what any sane and sensible person would do after they get a message like that. He runs for his life. And he doesn't stop running until he's out in the middle of the desert. Elijah is feeling sorry for himself. You can see it in the words that he speaks. Elijah says, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. You also see it a little while later when he's standing there on Mount Sinai and he says, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek to take my life away. Yes, Elijah is feeling sorry for himself, and that's understandable. That's why God responds by sending Elijah that food and that water while he's out there in the middle of the desert. But then Elijah does something strange. Instead of heading back to civilization to fight the good fight against Jezebel, Elijah keeps running in the other direction. 
And he doesn't stop running until he gets to Mount Sinai. Now this is where things get really interesting. First, there's a mighty wind. Then there's an earthquake and fire. And then there's a still, small voice. Now, my guess is that the earthquake, wind, and fire were all designed to get Elijah's attention and maybe even put a little fear in trembling in him. If you get the feeling that God is angry with Elijah, you're right. Those pyrotechnics show it, as do the words that God speaks to Elijah. Do you remember what God says to Elijah while he's standing there on the mountain? God says, what are you doing here, Elijah? In those words, God is basically saying, okay, Elijah, enough is enough. Back there, I gave you a hug. Now the only thing you're going to get is a kick in the pants. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, Elijah, because I still have work for you to do. So stop with the woe is me routine and get back in there and fight the good fight. God gives Elijah an attitude adjustment. What are you doing here, Elijah? Now, the food in the water shows you that God understands that it's normal sometimes to feel sorry for yourself. On the other hand, the earthquake, wind, and fire shows you that God isn't about to to let you get stuck in an attitude that isn't emotionally healthy or good for you. God specializes in attitude adjustments. You see it here and throughout the scriptures. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah got an attitude adjustment when he ended up in the belly of that great fish. Paul got an attitude adjustment when he saw that flash of light on the road to Damascus. Zacchaeus got an attitude adjustment when Jesus said, come down from that tree, Zacchaeus, because I have to stay at your house today. Jonah, he thought he was better than the people of Nineveh, but then he got an attitude adjustment. Paul hated Christians But then he got an attitude adjustment. Zacchaeus didn't like himself at all. But then he got an attitude adjustment. Many years ago, George Washington Carver gave an attitude adjustment to a taxi cab driver in Washington, D.C. If you think back to your history books, you will probably remember that George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist who did all kinds of research on the common peanut. He discovered that in addition to being nutritious, the peanut can be used to make things like cosmetics, paint, plastics, and petroleum. Well, one day, George Washington Carver was in Washington, D.C. for a conference. When he went to get into a taxi cab, the driver stopped him and said very sternly, I don't drive your kind. George Washington Carver just smiled and said, that's okay, just get him back then and I'll drive. God specializes in attitude adjustments. It doesn't matter if you're feeling sorry for yourself or you're a little too full of yourself or you're angry or bitter. God will always be there to give you an attitude adjustment. That's because God doesn't want pity or pride, or prejudice, or anything else keep you from experiencing and living life the way it is meant to be lived. God doesn't want a bad attitude to keep you from experiencing life in all of its goodness and its glory. God wants you to be able to experience and embrace life the way it was by a man who lived and worked as a toll booth operator. The toll booth where he worked was located on the Oakland Bay Bridge. Every morning, he got into that toll booth to sing and dance while collecting thousands of quarters during the morning rush hour. One of the commuters wrote about a conversation that he had with the man in the toll booth. What are you doing, I asked. I'm having a party, he said. What about the rest of these people? I looked over at the other booths. They're not invited, he said. 
I had a dozen questions to ask him, but someone in a big hurry to get somewhere behind me started punching his horn, and I drove off. But I made a note to myself, find this guy again. There's something in his eyes that tells me that there's magic in his booth. Months later, I did find him again, still with the loud music, still having a party. Again, I asked, what are you doing? He said, I remember you from the last time. I'm still dancing. I'm having the same party. I said, what about the rest of the people? He said, stop. What do these look like to you? He pointed down the row of the toll booths. They look like toll booths. No imagination, he said. I said, okay, I give up. What do they look like to you? He said, vertical coffins. What are you talking about? I can prove it, he said. At 8.30 every morning, live people get in. Then they die for eight hours. At 4.30, like Lazarus from the dead, they reemerge and go home. For eight hours, brain is on hold dead on the job, going through the motions. I was amazed this guy had discovered a philosophy. I couldn't help asking the next question. Why is it different for you? You're having a good time. He looked at me. I knew you were going to ask me that, he said. I'm going to be a dancer. He pointed to the administration building. My bosses are in there. They're paying for my training. God's deepest desire is for you to experience and embrace life in all of its goodness and its glory. So God will always be there to give you an attitude adjustment when that's what you really need. And here's the best news of all. Your God and my God. Our God is a chiropractor who makes house calls. Amen.